Enphase is one of the most popular growth stocks today and is also one of the best performing stocks in the last 5 years returning more than 2500% to shareholders. It did even better since its all time lows back in May 2017 returning more than 20,000% or 200x your investment in just 6 years. 200x. But recently, Enphase released its Q2 earnings results which sent the stock crashing and the stock is now down more than 40% year to date while the S&P 500 is up 20%. That said, is this the beginning of the end for Enphase or is the sell off a buying opportunity? My name is Riado and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, I analyze some of the most innovative companies in the world and help you find the companies of tomorrow. If that is something that you like to hear, don't forget to give my channel of follow. So in today's video, I'll be going through Enphase's Q2 earnings results, valuation, and what I think about the stock moving forward. Also, you can find the article to this analysis in the description below where I cover Enphase in much more detail. So definitely check that out. And with that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So let's take a look at the growth of the company. In Q2, revenue was $711 million, which is up 34% year over year due to higher consumer demand, increased microinverter shipments, as well as higher average selling prices. However, the 34% reported year-over-year -year growth rate fell short of analyst expectations by 2% or $15 million due to high interest rates that affected consumer affordability. Additionally, this is a 2% decline quarter-over-quarter -quarter, as well as a steep deceleration from Q1's 65% growth which seems to be threatening the growth story of the company. As mentioned earlier, growth was due to increased microinverter shipments which grew by 55% year-over-year in Q2 to about 5.2 million units shipped in Q2. However, growth was offset by a decrease in battery shipments which was down 38% year over year to just 82 megawatt hours shipped in Q2. As you can see, battery shipments have been falling for 3 straight quarters sequentially which is rather concerning and this is likely due to high interest rates which negatively affected affordability especially since batteries are the most expensive component in the Enphase energy system. But during the earnings call, the CEO mentioned that battery shipments should improve in Q3 and there should be a bigger inflection for Q4 and beyond as battery attach rates increase with NEM 3.0. Moving on, you can see revenue broken down by geography and as you can see, US revenue is decelerating meaningfully, declining by 12% quarter over quarter or 1% year over year in Q2, mainly due to tough macroeconomic conditions. During the earnings call, management mentioned that in Q2, Enphase did not enjoy the seasonally strong recovery quarter that they expected and that sell-through of their microinverters in the US decreased 20% compared to Q4. So clearly, high interest rates are putting pressure on demand for solar power equipment in the US. That aside, the international business drove all the growth in Q2 which is up by 173% year over year, driven mainly by Europe which grew 25% sequentially and more than tripled year over year. That said, it's really great to see the rapid growth in the international segment which is maintaining the growth of the entire business while the US deal with near-term challenges. So the US has historically been Enphase's main market and as of Q2, US makes up 59% of total revenue. However, US revenue as a percentage of total revenue is declining and given the rapid growth in international revenue, it won't be long before the international business overtakes the US business. Overall, growth is showing signs of weakness due to macroeconomic conditions and high interest rates and this is particularly serious in the US market where US revenue is declining year over year. However, these are temporary problems and consumers will eventually adjust to the higher interest rate environment and besides, the Fed will eventually cut rates which will drive demand once again. And while we wait for the US market to stabilize, the international segment is still growing rapidly which is a reflection of its industry leading technology and competitive positioning. Turning to profitability, Q2 gross profit was $323 million which is a 45% gap gross margin or a 40 6% non-gap gross margin. The increase in gross margins over the last few quarters was due to favorable product mix as the company sells more of its newer, higher-priced IQ8 microinverters as well as improved logistics. 
Moving down the income statement, Q2 operating profit was 170 million, which is a 24% gap operating margin or a 32% non gap operating margin. And similar to gross margins, you can see that operating margins have been improving as well, which reflects operating leverage within the business model. And finally, the bottom line looks great as well. In Q2, net income was 157 million, which is a 22% gap margin or a 29% non gap margin. And as you can see, margins continue to improve. So, nothing much to talk about here, but everything looks great from a profitability standpoint. Although we may see margins declining in Q3, which I'll talk more about later in the video. Enphase is in a strong financial position and the company has a strong balance sheet. As of Q2, the company has has $1.8 billion of cash and short-term investments with $1.3 billion of total debt which puts its net cash position to be about half a billion dollars. On a side note, Enphase is also dealing with inventory challenges. As mentioned earlier, their micro-inverter sell-through rates in the US decreased 20% compared to Q4, thus building excess inventory. As you can see, inventory continues to build up and days in inventory is picking up as well with that figure approaching levels seen during the early days of the pandemic. That means it takes longer for the company to sell its inventory, likely due to slowing demand. As a result, management plans to decrease shipments in Q3 to reduce inventory in the channel. So moving forward, we should keep an eye out for how inventory levels change. Nevertheless, Enphase is well positioned to deal with near-term challenges, particularly because of its strong free cash flow profile. As you can see, Enphase has been consistently generating free cash flow margins of over 30% and in Q2, the company generated $225 million of free cash flow, which represents an impressive free cash flow margin of 32%. As a result of high free cash flow generation and plummeting share prices, management also took the opportunity to scoop up its own shares, buying back $200 million worth of its stock in Q2. Consequently, the board authorized a new share repurchase program which extended the company's buyback capacity to $1 billion and I think this is a strong signal that management believes that the stock is undervalued. That said, Enphase is a highly capital efficient business with a strong balance sheet which should generate shareholder value in the long run. But here's where things get ugly. So here you can see guidance in gap and non-gap measures and I'll just focus on the gap numbers as I think it's more important but I've included non-gap measures here just for your reference. So management expects Q3 revenue to be in the range of 550 million to 600 million which is a 9% year over year decline if we take the midpoint guidance. This guidance is well below analyst estimates of 749 million dollars and is also a steep deceleration from Q2's 34% year-over-year growth and this got a lot of investors worried asking questions like is Enphase's growth story over, will things get even worse from here, did revenue drop due to competition and so on and this is probably why the stock sold off after Q2 earnings results. But here's the CEO providing more context about its revenue guidance. So the weak guidance is due to the lower sell-through rates in the US as I explained earlier which caused excess inventory in the channel which consequently forced the company to reduce shipments in Q3 and therefore revenue is expected to be down in Q3. In my opinion, this is the right move by management as it prevents the company from over manufacturing and over building their inventory which could lead to inventory write downs in the future if demand in the short term continues to be soft. But it's important to note that the weak guidance is almost exclusively due to the issues faced in the US market. As mentioned by the CEO, 85% of its guidance is due to a one-time rebalancing of its US operations while the remaining 15% is due to Europe being seasonally down in Q3. So what I'm getting from this is that there's a one-time correction in the US and then things should improve again in Q4. In other words, Q3 could be the throw in terms of revenue growth. That said, it's great to hear that the outlook in Europe remains robust. But moving on, the revenue guidance includes shipments of 80 to 100 megawatt hours of IQ batteries, which is about a 33% year over decline as high interest rates continue to slow down demand. Gap gross margin is expected to be between 41 to 44% before net IRA benefit, which is expected to be about $15.5 million in Q3 based on 600,000 unit shipments of US 
has manufactured microinverters. And the midpoint guidance of about 42.5% is slightly higher than last year's figure of about 42%. So that is still good news. Gap operating expenses is expected to grow 9% year over year in Q3. And this figure is higher than revenue growth as you can see here, which means Q3 operating margins will drop year over year. So keep that in mind. All in all, revenue guidance is pretty ugly due to high interest rates, weak sell through as well as tough year over year comps, which is why the stock sold off after earnings. To make matters worse, the Fed recently hiked rates by another 25 basis points, which could worsen demand for solar components including end phase products. But that aside, the fundamentals of the business remain strong and the issues it is facing currently are externally driven rather than a company specific problem. With that being said, the long term outlook of the business remains positive and the company still has a long growth runway ahead as the world transitions to renewable energy. I've shown you guys this chart multiple times already in this channel but it's worth repeating again. Solar PV installed power capacity which is the yellow line here is expected to become the largest source of electricity by 2027 and that alone should be a major tailwind for solar companies like Enphase. Turning to valuation, we can see that Enphase is trading at an EV to revenue multiple of just 7.2 times which is back to its pre-pandemic levels and is also well below its highs of 30 times back in 2021. At the same time, its PE ratio and price to free cash flow ratios are trading near their all time lows as you can see right here at just 38 times and 25 times respectively. So on a historical basis, Enphase looks very cheap so this is really interesting to me. And compared to Pierce, Enphase is also looking very cheap. As you can see, competitors such as Solar Edge and First Solar are trading at PE ratios of 70 times and 138 times respectively compared to just 38 times for Enphase. Enphase is basically a chip company so I've included the semiconductor giants as a comparison and as you can see Nvidia and AMD trade at a much larger premium than Enphase. That said I think Enphase is attractively valued compared to Pierce. I also did a DCF analysis on Enphase but before I show you my model let's see analyst revenue estimates following Q2 results. As you can see, after the poor Q3 guidance, all 25 analysts that follow Enphase revise revenue estimates downwards, which is not surprising. And here are analyst projections on revenue for the next few years. On average, analysts expect revenue to grow just 13.78% this year. And I think before earnings came out, analysts were expecting Enphase to grow 30% this year. So that's quite a large downward revision for Enphase. And I think most people, including analysts, underestimated the impact of higher interest rates on the affordability of solar systems. But by next year, macro conditions should improve, probably a few rate cuts here and there, and this should increase demand once again. And that's why analysts expect revenue to accelerate in the following years, as you can see here. That said, here's my DCF model and here are my key assumptions. For revenue growth, I've used analyst estimates for the first three years, which I've shown you a few seconds ago, and then I'm going to decrease the annual growth rate down to just 12% percent by the end of 2032. As for the rest of my assumptions, I pretty much kept them unchanged from my last video. I think despite the weak Q3 guidance, the fundamentals of the business remain strong, so I'm not going to change any of my assumptions. That said, cost of revenue and operating expenses as a percentage of revenue should continue to drop as the company gains operating leverage and by 2032, I expect the company to achieve an operating margin of 30%. For income tax, and depreciation and amortization, I will set them at a constant rate of 20% and 2.2% respectively. Stock-based compensation will eventually drop to just 3.5% of revenue and for both capital expenditures and changes in networking capital, I am going to set them at their 5-year averages of about 2.4% and 0.6% respectively. So based on all these assumptions, I expect revenue to reach about $12.75 billion by 2032 with a free cash flow margin of about 28%. And based on a discount rate of 10% and a perpetual growth rate of 2.5%, I arrive at an intrinsic value per share of about $226 for Enphase, which is pretty much unchanged from the price target that I set in my last video. That said, my current price target is slightly higher than the average analyst price target of $200 a share, and it has an upside potential of about 50% based on the current price of $100 and $50 a share. 
So based on my DCF model, I think Enphase looks quite undervalued as you can see here. But even though shares look undervalued today, I won't be buying the stock as it has not fallen below my margin of safety price of about $136. It's getting close, so I'll be watching the stock really closely. Quickly turning to the risks, the first major risk for Enphase is competition. We need to consider companies like Solar Edge and Tesla and accept the fact that they may come up with better solar products and services, which will take market share away from Enphase. At the same time, we need to consider the risk that solar equipments could be commoditized one day, which will drive down prices and consequently margins. So moving forward, we need to carefully track gross margins and if gross margins decline meaningfully it's a sign that competition is getting serious and that end phase may be in big trouble the second major risk is changing regulation policies and incentives for example as we've seen in q2 results high interest rates are putting pressure on demand for Enphase products and services in the US. In other words, Enphase has no control over government regulations, incentives, and policies, and when they fall out of favor, things can go south really quickly for Enphase. So to wrap up this video, Enphase is taking a hit because of weak guidance due to external factors that are out of the company's control, namely high interest rates. But I think consumers will eventually adjust to this high interest rate environment Environment, and when they do, demand should pick up once again. And by the way, this is a US specific issue. Last time I checked, the international business is still growing at triple digits. So while the near-term outlook looks bad, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that the long-term outlook of the solar industry and Enphase remain promising. I think Enphase remains an attractive investment opportunity today, especially after the recent sell-off. But for me, I prefer a larger margin of safety, which is why I'm going to be patient and wait for a better entry point. With that said, what do you think about Enphase stock? Also, if there's another company that you want me to cover in this channel, please let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's all that I have for you today. If you find value in this video, please hit like and subscribe. And as always, I appreciate you and I hope you have an amazing day. See you guys on the next video.